This is Sububia Kana, a really striking plant in the grasslands with its silvery and hairy appearance with these bright pink flowers. They do stand out in contrast really nicely with the green of the grasses. Agapanthus campanulatus in the habitat, a genus that's well known around the world, as most gardens have some form of Agapanthus. I suppose it's you either love them or you hate them, but uh, in their natural environment they're absolutely beautiful and amazing to come across. Here we have another blue flower in the felt, which is Aristea torulosa. They really do have beautiful blue flowers, similar in shade to that of the Agapanthus. Although I have seen white and pink flowered sort of mutants of this uh, species. And not far from the other spot of Agapanthus, we have this one. And this particular clone is uh, quite floriferous with a lot of densely packed flowers and a slightly deeper blue shade. Here is Persinia nana growing with the Agapanthus and to the left the two orange spots is Tritonia nelsonii. This is locally referred to as the resurrection bush or shrub as they normally go brown within a week or so of not receiving rain and then right after a rainstorm uh, within a day they'll go green again. Here you can see Giastrum, a sort of a star-shaped fungus. I would not try to eat them, but uh, they are really beautiful in the sort of leaf litter under some forest canopy. And also growing under the forest canopy is Disparis micrantha. They'll flower in March, at the moment only buds, 
And also in the shade is the uh, Chlorophyton barkerii, also growing near the water stream. And sort of reaching the end now is the uh, Streptocarus vandalieri. is Solanum sicimbrii folium, sometimes referred to as the wild tomato. You can see those thorns on the leaves. And this is Gladiolus delenii, also a genus familiar to most gardeners and non-gardeners alike. I'll leave you with some footage here of Haemanthus humilis, subspecies Hirsutus. The stems of the flowers and the leaves are covered in tiny little hairs that uh, gives us this silvery sheen appearance from a distance. This is probably one of the rare Eulophias, Eulophia luxiflora, although not yet officially named luxiflora, um, they definitely do deserve their own species name. Um, currently they lumped under Hyans nutans, if uh, I remember correctly. And in these grasslands, we also have uh, parasitic plants uh, growing in symbiosis with the grasses and that. And this one is one of the larger flowered species, Stria elegans. Here you can see Polygala hotentotica. The flowers are quite unique on these and they have little beards that uh, sort of protrude from the center of the flower. And as the season starts to shift 
and nighttime temperatures cool down by like two or three degrees, uh, we can see all the nerines from the Amaryllidaceae family starting to flower. This is Nerine remanii, one of the white species. They also have red pollen and uh, the reddish ovaries that contrast really beautifully with these pure crystal white flowers. And here we have Gladiolus permeabilis subspecies edulis, another beautiful one that you might have seen in a previous episode. But now with autumn, they're flowering all over the grasslands. And this is what I would think to be Pseudocilago serrata, although Salata is a cape species. Um, this one has been observed in the eastern escarpment and KwaZulu Natal down to the eastern cape. So this could be a new species or a subspecies, but uh, further research into that would definitely be needed. This is Habenario humilior, one of the terrestrial orchid species growing here on the high felt. Not the showiest one, but uh, still a beautiful plant to encounter. Unfortunately, this particular habitat where they're growing is uh, also under threat of or with invasive species, including this cosmos, which a lot of South Africans think to be a beautiful local flower that flowers in uh, February and March. They cover large stretches of roadside and people like to stop and take selfies with these cosmos in the background far too often not realizing that uh, it's highly invasive and kills all of the local beautiful flowers that we have native to South Africa. <laughs> 